This Monero Mateo video is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Safely store, send, receive, and trade your Monero on Cake Wallet on Android and iOS. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Good to be with you today, Monero Mateo. Thanks for tuning in. We are going to be talking a little bit about Monero and its economic use case, uh, adoption, which is going on. And we've talked about adoption before, uh, statistics and strategies. Go check out our video on that. Uh, some of that is pretty informative if you're interested in having that be integrated into your business or different ideas that we could employ in order to increase the adoption rate of this stuff, which is ultimately what it's all about. Uh, we can market all we want, we could talk about it all we want, but ultimately if people aren't using this stuff as currencies, what is the ultimate use case of it, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So that's gonna be a little bit different from what we usually talk about. We usually talk about the bullish case on the macro, for which there are thousands of arguments we've made a good bit of those cases on this channel. Um, but today I want to talk about why Monero can certainly be adopted. And it's very much something which can be used by businesses, online merchants, and there are things being developed right now to make that easier. Uh, we've talked a little bit about WooCommerce, and I believe there's somebody out there who did a video on that. And God bless that person for doing that because I couldn't make a video on that. Uh, I don't have a website to show people how you could set that up. So if I find the video, I'll link it up there so that you could give it a look and give that person your support. But today we're just gonna talk about the real world use case, which is very, very strong. And I've said it before, Monero has the biggest use case and value proposition in the real world than any other cryptocurrency. I truly believe that. Uh, even Bitcoin, in my opinion. And people like to say Bitcoin is digital gold. As for me, I have some problems with that argument. We've talked about that with Kevin Wad. Maybe I'll make a particular uh, video to talk about that perspective that I have. We talked about it a little bit in our Hedging Against Crypto video, uh, where we talk about the uh, capricious future of internet and electricity reliability. Um, but we won't talk about that right now. But anyways, Monero is now starting to spill into the masses. Let's just start with the good news. We're not going to watch the video, but there's a guy by the name of Network Chuck with 1.6 million subscribers. And this is from Afungible. Thank you for the post. Um, and he made a video recently on mining Monero on a Raspberry Pi. And a Raspberry Pi is like a miniature computer with a lot of processing power. And it's what a lot of miners use. So that is good. More people are talking about this. More people are waking up to this. So it's great. More people are thinking about setting up nodes and things like this. And I know I don't really talk about the tech of nodes and mining and all that stuff too much. I did invite somebody who was behind RandomX onto the show, but he didn't want to come on for whatever reason. He didn't respond to my request, uh, but that's fine. That's fine. We'll find somebody else if we can. So that is good. More people are talking about this stuff. Notice how most people mention Monero. And what is he referring to? Well, somebody in the cryptocurrency Reddit, which has a lot of people following it, you've got about 4 million members, quite a lot of people for a Reddit group. And we'll go check that here in a sec. But uh, they had said in the original post that he's referring to. So here we go. Here's the post. Uh, this is on cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency. What cryptocurrencies have you personally found legitimate use cases for? And there were many responses. And he says in the post, I like to use XLM for money transfer between exchanges because of low fees. Uh, I've used Litecoin similarly. And yes, uh, Litecoin, because it's so cheap, it can be used as a way to flip on wallets like CakeWallet, for example, into things like Monero. It's really useful for that purpose. And there are some exchanges where you can exchange your Litecoin for other cryptocurrencies. And I believe that you can do that on Trade Ogre. Uh, not for Monero in particular, though. And then he says, I'm aware of certain cases for other cryptocurrencies like VET, but I think XLM and Litecoin are the only ones that I personally use for anything other than speculation or store value. Now, he's probably not a dark web surfer, it seems. Uh, then, he, then he says, there's coins like Ethereum and Link, which have legitimate use cases and purposes within the cryptocurrency space, but not on a level where I would personally use them for anything beyond investing. <clears throat> I 
kind of agree with that. Uh, how do you use Ethereum to any profitable degree with the gas prices? Uh, and that's why competitors like Daryl are coming out to the scene, it seems. We'll see what goes on with that. But <laughs> look at all the comments on this. And just note, for whatever reason, the moderators locked this thread. <laughs> and no new comments can be posted. Now, why is that? Let's take a look. So the top comment here, Monero. Not going to say why, though. Could he be surfing on the webs in dark nefarious places we know why you silly goose <laughs> uh the only crypto that feels like cash it makes sense not a hodl case just usage yeah so everyone's saying xmr this guy's saying xmr here monero to buy things rather nebulous comments not too much detail as you would expect yes things i like to buy things with monero myself yes yes uh these people probably know how to use Tor. Monero is digital cash. You can buy anything with it from this and that to plutonium. Uh, yes, I mean, that's an unfortunate reality, but that is true. Um, yeah, and so all these people are saying Monero. This guy's like, yeah, literally the entire dark web accepts it. On some marketplaces, it's the only option. And on White House Market, which was before it shut down recently, the biggest marketplace on the dark web marketplace, it was exclusively Monero. And this shift started to happen back in 2016. In 2018, Monero started to gain tremendous amounts of ground against Bitcoin. And go watch Kevin Wad's video on this. He's made a pretty good video on that on his channel. And we just did a recent interview with him. I'll post it up there. But um, <clears throat> he makes the claim that, yes, Monero is growing massively on the dark webs. It's probably going to completely phase out Bitcoin at some point. And there are many arguments in the Monero community. Yeah, because Monero or Bitcoin is the currency which got popularized because of its use on these, you know, back channel marketplaces. Monero is going to perhaps have that initiation process into the world through the dark web marketplaces into the real world. And I'm not saying that it's exclusively the dark web. I mean, there's many, many other use cases which are perfectly legal. Um, and we've talked about that a lot. But yes, I mean, that is one way that adoption certainly happens. If you have your coin adopted by a lot of marketplaces that are operating in such a way where privacy is kind of a premium, well, that gives it a lot of credibility and more people are inclined to trust that. And that's why I always tell the Pirate Chain bros, who I love, I like them. Uh, I say, look, Pirate Chain may have better tech as far as ZK snarks are concerned specifically, but until it starts to be accepted on the dark web marketplaces and until it starts to be really adopted and used, um, then people aren't going to trust it as much because people don't understand the technology behind a lot of the stuff. Like ZK Snarks, that's some really complicated stuff with really, really complicated math that like five people in the world understand. But from what I hear, uh, there are some murmurings that Pirate Chain could be uh, serving, serving the seven dark seas uh, on the dark web. And that's great. That seems to be something which is happening soon. We'll see if that does happen. But as of now, it's Monero. And that's why uh, Monero is the most trusted, because it has the longest track record, the most network effects, etc. So he says here, I'm surprised somebody hasn't figured out a way to run smart contracts on Monero. That would make the dark web much harder to remove, but easier to access. Interesting comment. Um, Darrow is working on that, from what I understand. And we did a pretty extensive video on Darrow. Pretty interesting technology. And I'm not saying that any of these coins are going to outcompete Monero. I mean, again, Monero has the biggest network effect. It's been around the longest. And with cryptos that value privacy, uh, street cred is really, really important. Okay, It's not like Bitcoin where it's like, oh, it's been around the longest, therefore it's going to succeed. It's a transparent ledger. Anyone can remake this stuff. Um, and if other people make Bitcoin 2.0 and it works better, uh, because you can do like smart contracts. I mean, some people are saying that Ethereum is going to outpace Bitcoin. Could be, could be. I mean, you have a lot of people in the hedge fund industry saying this. But as far as Monero goes, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Unless, 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 unless there is a problem with Monero. 
there is some kind of privacy flaw or the government catches up in this arms race to figure out what's going on with the privacy functions in Monero and then something else surpasses it, whether it's pirate chain or something like this. In that case, I could see something else overtaking it. But when it comes to street cred, that's what I think will make the king that will crown the coin in this particular segment of the crypto space. So that's just something to note. Secret Network has entered the chat. Yeah, there are some interesting comments on the Secret Network. I'm interested what you guys think about that. I've not done a video on that, though I hear there are some interesting things about it. But there's kind of like a centralization issue as of now. Like you have to submit an email after you put your coins onto the Secret Network. Uh, that sounds a little sketchy to me. But yeah, this guy says BAT is good for tipping. I'm not sure what that means. You can tip people in BAT? Uh, basic attention token? That is interesting. I think you can do that on Twitter. If you're on Twitter on the Brave browser. Maybe I should set that up. That'd be cool. XLM, cheap transfers, Monero. Sorry, I can't reveal. So look, I mean, too long to read. Monero is the best thing here. Monero is obviously great for making significant charitable contributions, but remaining anonymous so that nobody thinks you're doing it for the optics. Right. Could be. Could be. Right. So this is on the cryptocurrency form. And everyone here talks about Bitcoin as far as I'm concerned. I don't surf Reddit that often. Uh, I'm not a Reddit bro. But this guy says here, Monero, just because it's really the only one that's like digital cash. Nobody's saying Bitcoin. Like, I just want to direct your attention here. Is anybody saying Bitcoin here as far as economic use cases is concerned? No. There's nothing about Bitcoin here at all. And this is on the cryptocurrency Reddit. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? But this guy, experts say, maybe he's an expert. He says, fungible is somewhat of an abstract concept for some. So I'll spell it out. Well, we don't need to spell it out. We've talked about it a lot. But Bitcoin is not fungible. And that's basically what he says here. Yep, yep, yep. And we, we did talk about this in our talk with the body anarchist on price manipulation on Kevin's channel as well. Uh Bitcoins are identifiable, so it's clear that these specific Bitcoins are guaranteed non-tainted coins. Uh, he's talking about Bitcoins that were seized by the government and auctioned off for a premium. And they were sold at a premium because you could be guaranteed that because they come from the government, there's no taint on them. And we talk about this extensively with atomic swaps, with BISC, which is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange uh, based on Bitcoin. Like People are worried about receiving tainted Bitcoin. It's a real concern. And so what I speculate is that on top of this, you're going to have an industry of um, of data analytics, which are hooked up to people's wallets, maybe, uh, who are hired by companies, which are maybe transacting a lot with different cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. It could be that they want to monitor all the Bitcoins that are coming in just to make sure they're not tainted because of this fungibility issue, because you can see the transaction history of bitcoin and the subjective value of these bitcoins can be determined thereof so as a result they are sold for a significant premium yep 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 yep. so he goes into that good stuff good stuff yeah and the monero bros who are still in the game right now uh they they get all this stuff i mean everybody else is sold for doggy coins and dodge -Alon and whatever new ones are coming along there's a new one every day i look at coinbase the names are getting more and more ridiculous but the percentage increase for these coins are going ever, ever more nuclear. <laughs> like, it's crazy. These game bros are going to be the death of us all, for sure. Uh, Monero is for ultimate privacy. Too bad it still gets busted when you convert to fiat, though. <laughs> and then this guy's like, don't convert to fiat. Correct. Just keep it. Hold it. Uh, although, what you can do, and we'll get to this a little bit later in the video, you can buy coin cards. And... This is what they say. Look to privately spend your Monero at hundreds of merchants. We'll just cover it now. Why not? Gift cards are inherently private and are great tools to keep your information safe. Coin cards accepts Monero for all of our gift cards. So if you make Monero online, do whatever you do, you can buy these coin cards and then you can use the coin cards, which are gift cards, in the economy, in the main economy, which is cool. So there are ways to do this stuff. And let's just keep going. But doesn't this float your boat a little bit? Doesn't this give you some morale? 
certainly gives me morale, right? People get this stuff. Uh, Swiss bank in your pocket. Monero, only coin with actual value. Don't be silly. Monero, what the fungible? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So we could go on down the list. Maybe this is why they stopped <laughs> uh, the comments because everyone's just saying Monero, right? And again, atomic swaps are being opened up to the world right now because of Bitcoin's taproot upgrade, which we talked about yesterday. Uh, Bitcoin users are going to have more privacy when they go into Monero via atomic swaps because the atomic swap transaction is not going to look like any other transaction. Uh, or, or, yeah, did I say that right? So like if you go into Monero with an atomic swap, that looks like a regular Bitcoin transaction. It looks like a Lightning Network transaction. They all look fundamentally the same. Now, people confuse this in thinking that Bitcoin is now private because of Taproot. It's not. Please don't make that mistake. Um, you will get eaten by the sharks if you surf the dark webs, if you do that. But yes, Scuba Monster is back. He's saying this is a really good sign. We just need more intelligent conversation about Monero in that group. Yeah. So many people in there are desperate for education on what good sound money really is. Also understanding fungibility and the importance of fungibility to money. There is still so many people who say they've been in crypto for years and still think Bitcoin is fungible. Look, if you know what fungibility even is, I'm surprised that you think Bitcoin is fungible. Uh, that is wild to me. I mean, that presupposes that you think Bitcoin is private. And if you know about privacy being inherent to fungibility, then I just don't know where you are. I mean... That is a very important thing to mark and know. So that is to know. I was going to say something else. I forgot. Intelligent conversation. Very rare over there at RCC. Yeah, the Reddit bros are like hating on the crypto bros. Bitcoin can be traced pretty easily. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Monero is not even mentioned by the OP. It's just in the comments. Yep. So, yeah, gives you guys a little bit of hope, doesn't it? Gives me some good dry powder. It's great. Let's get to the next lily pad here. I want to talk about, real quick, Monero transactions. And I particularly want to lay out a use case for this because a lot of people wonder, well, I guess Monero is good for the, the dark webs out there. Monero is good for buying... Uh, you know, things from demons and stuff. But look, it's something which can be very much adopted by the regular economy. And this is something that we should anticipate to happen because it's actually quite, I don't want to say user-friendly. That's still being worked on. But it's quick. Cheap fees are a part of Monero because of dynamic block size. And anyone can download a Cake Wallet and anyone can get to work on this stuff. So we'll talk about this for a second. And we'll first talk about this article on MoneroHow.com. And this is a good article from a good website that says, how long do Monero transactions take? And so the typical timeline during testing, one second, remote wallet can see the transaction, and this has been initiated. Now, this one second indicates to the person who's to receive the Monero transaction that the transaction has begun. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's complete. But, but, given the transaction has started, you can have a reasonable level of confidence that that transaction is going to go through. Now, that's not totally 100% foolproof. There are some caveats to that. But that's fast. That's like Lightning Network fast. And... If you trust the person that you're dealing with, maybe they're a regular customer, maybe they're not really buying that much from you, they're just giving you a couple bucks, that's really useful. That's really useful for small purchases and payments, which is what the Lightning Network is supposed to be for. That's why everyone's ranting and raving about the Lightning Network. Oh, isn't it great? It's not that private, guys. I mean, go look this up. We made a report on that for our patrons. Uh, go check that out on our Patreon if you want to become a patron. Uh, but it's not that private. And people are saying that this is the fix to Bitcoin's not only uh, scalability problem, but fungibility problem. And again, it, it it's not really. I mean, you can't have a layer two fix a layer one privacy issue, 
Um, and some people like to compare that with gold. Well, some of the gold is not fungible. Gold on its base layer is fungible. It is private. It isn't until serial numbers are put on top of that that makes the gold not fungible. That's a different conversation here. Uh, but he says here, about three minutes and 45 seconds, remote wallet displays the first confirmation of transactions appearing on the blockchain. So, yeah, once you get that first confirmation, you can have that much more assuredness that it's going to go through. If you get one confirmation, you could be pretty sure it's going to be okay. Now, you may say, three minutes, that's a long time. What if I'm in a checkout counter? What if I am uh, in a rush and I need to go? Well, um, <clears throat> you can kind of set up a scheme, I guess, if you're a store owner, where you could say, hey, I'll accept your zero confirmation payment if you pay a little extra, if you really need to go and you don't want to wait around. If you pay a little bit of extra, uh, I will take that as sort of like a premium or some kind of uh, insurance that it will go through. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the transaction will be turned around necessarily, uh, but that's a way that you could at least have your fears assuaged. And if you accept more zero confirmation transactions, these quick transactions um, from more people, that time that you save in aggregate could maybe make up for one of those transactions not going through. Does that make sense? So that's one way you could do it. Also think about like a Kroger plus card program or like a Costco card program, like a membership program. If you have a store and people are checking out of your store, uh, maybe somebody is a frequent customer or they're a member of your store and therefore you have all their information, you have their name, address, uh, phone number, etc. So if their transaction doesn't go through for whatever reason with the zero confirmation, well, then you know who they are and then you could go retrieve those funds, right? So that's another way that that could be addressed. 26 minutes, remote wallet receives 10 confirmations of the transaction and considers the funds fully confirmed and unlocked for spending. So this is another thing we'll talk about here in a sec, but it's said here, when you send a Monero payment, it will be announced to the Monero network instantly. In our tests, in about one second, a Monero wall on the other side of the planet will be able to see that the transaction has been announced. However, it is not enough to rely on that announcement because the sender can make multiple such announcements in an attempt to double spend their funds. This is why the announcement of the transaction needs to be mined into a block by the network of Monero nodes. This mining is a means by which the nodes come to consensus among themselves that the transaction is legitimate and not a double spend. Now, there are some arguments out there where it's like, okay, the cost to try to do this, the expertise to try to do this, it's very unlikely somebody would try to do this with very small purchases, right? So with small purchases of like less than 100 bucks, depending on who you are, um, you, you probably don't need to concern yourself too much with this. Um, so, and the cost of the person wanting to do this, it's going to be more tedious and burdensome to do that for such a small perp, uh, purchase. So they probably will not do that. But with bigger transactions, obviously, you're probably going to want to make uh, wait for more confirmations. On average, Monero blocks are mined every two minutes. That means after announcing a transaction, your transaction will wait for the next block to be mined, and then it will take around two minutes to be mined into that new block. Right. And it could give or take a minute. At this point, that the remote wallet will display a notification that funds have been received. The funds will show in your balance, but will not yet be unlocked for spending. After about 26 minutes, the wallet will have 10 confirmations of the transaction, and we'll consider the funds fully confirmed and unlocked for spending. So this is another people. This is another thing that people see problematic, <clears throat> and the 20 minute, roughly average time that it takes to unlock your funds that you receive. It's not too big a deal if you're doing business, and you know if you've worked at like a Kroger or a fast food restaurant or something like this, uh, the money that you get, you typically don't count up and make other purchases with as a business until the end of the business day or the end of the shift when you're counting the money in the register and 
reconciling that with receipts and things like this. Um, so that's not too much of an issue. And given it's Monero and given it's, for the most part, infinitely divisible, you're not going to need to uh, make change, so to speak. Uh, that's not going to be totally necessary. So it's not that big a deal if you're a business uh, because more than likely you're not going to take the money that you're receiving in day-to-day -day operations to pay other expenses during that day. Unless you're like really, really cash flow crunched. But at that point, you're probably getting debt to cover a lot of that stuff. Just something to note. Comparisons with Bitcoin. Initial waiting time for the next block to be mined. Up to two minutes, average one minute. Up to 10 minutes, average five minutes for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is about eight minutes longer for the first block to be mined. And we're not talking about the Lightning Network here. We're just talking about Bitcoin. <clears throat> time for the first block to be confirmed. Average two minutes for Monero. Average 10 minutes for Bitcoin. Time for transactions to be fully confirmed. 20 minutes for Monero. One hour for Bitcoin. I know there's some variability to this uh, for Bitcoin, but that's generally what it is for Monero. It's generally faster. So that's good. And you could say, well, Matt, Bitcoin's being used far more than Monero. So you can expect that it's going to take longer. But we'll get to that in a sec. There's actually no reason to suspect this is going to change because of dynamic block size. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Blocks have a maximum size. So if there's no room, then your transaction will be delayed. If you are desperate to have your transaction included in the block promptly, you will have to increase the transaction fees that you pay to the network. This is for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is in turmoil at the time of writing over an argument about whether to increase the block size. So this is from a while ago. I think they've addressed some of these issues and it's become a little bit faster and it's become a little bit cheaper. So let me just note that. So that is just an overview of how a Monero transaction works and why it is that um, when you have a zero confirmation transaction, it's ideal to wait, but you don't necessarily have to. This is the time that it takes to fully confirm those transactions. Um, we'll get to some other comments on this because this is an important feature to understand if you want to use this in day-to-day -day operations where you're having a lot of cash flow. Anyone who doubts zero conf, this is from OSRS needs F2P. Interesting. RuneScape player, maybe? I was just playing around on a slow device and sent some XMR. The service detected and credited my account with the balance while Monero GUI was still displaying, displaying <clears throat> sending transaction. The user experience here is amazing and fantastic to people worried about the double spends. This is a virtual service platform where they could just stop my account if I double spent, meaning in practice, zero confirmation is still secure. And this guy says, uh, Fort 3... H lulls. <laughs> it fits so many real world payment scenarios, both in person and online. Not really sure why it isn't discussed more, but it is a great option for merchants while light, uh, <clears throat> layer one payments are viable and the norm for even tiny purchases. Yeah, I mean, that's ideal. Because with Bitcoin, <clears throat> hold on one second. If you want to get into the Lightning Network, you're going to have to make a transaction first to get onto the Lightning <coughs> Network. And that transaction in and of itself introduces inefficiency to the process and to the procedure. And to run a node on the Lightning Network is ridiculously complicated. I mean, you've got to manage liquidity channels. You've got to uh, download the entire blockchain again. You've got to have internet electricity on at all times. You have to be monitoring this stuff to make sure nobody defrauds you and posts like a fraudulent invoice. So Monero is just so much easier, so much more simpler. Um, and even though you could probably have more liquidity going back and forth because you don't have to rely on confirmations on the Lightning Network, uh, the entire procedure is that much more inefficient and complicated because it's a layer two. So I just want to note that. And not only that, but it introduces other problems where if enough people use the Lightning Network, who's going to be there to mine the main Bitcoin blockchain if the volume slows down? Because the network at some point is going to rely mostly on fees. And if they're not getting too many fees to mine this stuff, 
and their margins are going down. Maybe electricity prices are going up because of everything going on in the environmental sector, which we've talked about. Well, what incentive is there going to be to mine this stuff? And what does that mean for the security of the blockchain network? Another problem for layer twos. So he says here, Monero cannot support the volume necessarily of credit card transaction levels, but it can provide a strong base layer to build on top of it in the future as and when needed. So there could be a layer two is what they're saying. Thankful for those who have built Monero into what it is today. Yes, we are. We are indeed thankful for them. So let me see if I can find any other comments here. Yeah, he says scalability is going to come with more development of the computation infrastructure and the bandwidth infrastructure, he says. Uh, he says we technically can support the volume of credit card transactions. The blockchain can because of tail emission and dynamic block size. But he says what can't support that volume currently is the existing internet. But you know, in the year 2001, I was ripping CDs and MP3s. Uh, and then it developed and got better. Okay, we don't need to get into all that. So let me see if I can find some other comments here. So this guy's like, is this 100%? And this guy makes a pretty good rebuttal. How can I trust the zero comps 100%? I would recommend having the double spend problem of zero confirmations be thoroughly investigated so we could have a recent dialogue regarding it because he's like, I have doubts as to the test. Maybe it suffers from a small sample size. And he says, you can settle for anything less than 100% assurance because in practice, PayPal is not 100% assured thanks to disputes. Credit cards aren't with chargebacks. Even cash isn't with forgery i.e. Uh, counterfeited money, which is just money <laughs> in general because of the Fed. Uh, realistically, though, people don't scam businesses for $25 very often. If you tried to scam, the business simply wouldn't ship your product or they'd freeze your account. Right, and if everything's going online and you're not just doing this at a brick-and-mortar store, which are being phased out at the moment, you're making online purchases with this stuff. I mean, who cares? You know, you just wait the extra few minutes before you ship out the product. Um, the zero confirmation thing isn't that important at that point. And if you're just tipping somebody, uh, you know, like somebody's playing a video game, think of all the use cases of the Lightning Network, for example, where people are tipping people in video games, people are tipping people on, you know, social media websites now like Twitter. Uh, zero confirmation ain't that important. Uh, is somebody going to take back their tip in the next couple of seconds? Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's going to happen. Out of theory and into practice... Uh, xmar.to accepted zero confirmation for anything under a couple thousand dollars and immediately sent out Bitcoin. I don't recall any scams happening because it's more difficult to double spend on zero confirmation with XMR than people seem to realize. So he's saying it's difficult to double spend with XMR. I've never tried to do that. And honestly, guys, if people adopted this in mass, do you think they would know what a double spend is? Do you think most people would understand what we're even talking about here? Probably not most people, right? Most people, they think, cool, I just spent my money. It's gone. I'm not going to try to spend it again. That would be dumb. <laughs> like, that's not something that it's in, that's in the psychology of most people. Oh, I just spent my $5. He has my $5. But you know what? Maybe I could spend that $5 over here. No, that's insanity. Like, nobody thinks like that. So I wouldn't anticipate this being too much of an issue. It's just we in the Monero community are highly skeptical of just about everything. <laughs> like, and so that's why we're not into Bitcoin in the first place, but that's why we're having this conversation. It's just, in some cases, totally theoretical and interesting to think about philosophically and how it would apply to uh, a real world use case. But for the most part, when people spend their money, it's gone. And you could rely on the zero confirmation. I just came from a grocery store, $450 in foodstuffs. Uh, transactions at box stores and home electronics outlets would be the most targeted as they are high-paced environments with no KYC. Given time, a double-spend system will be developed and optimized to bend the outcome more and more in my favor. So the question is, what percentage of loss would you as a vendor find acceptable? 
Uh, so that's an interesting question. We talked about that a little bit before. Just looking at this real quick, seeing what to think of this. So I think we talked about what we needed to in regards to that. But let's go here. Uh, there's an interesting comment that I want to get from Nerd Mister. He's got some interesting takes on this. Because Gadahawk, he says, this may be me personally. But while I absolutely believe <clears throat> XMR is the future, I feel transactions take a little bit too much time to confirm. Monero is almost perfect as a currency, but if it were just a little bit faster, it'd be so much better. And Nerd Mr. says, one, small transactions like paying a coffee can be secure without confirmation since the cost to do a double spend would likely be higher than the potential gain. So opportunity costs would be higher. Maybe the real economic cost would be too. The easiest attack is by fee bribing. That is creating a new transaction, sending the payment back to the attacker, offering higher fees so that miners will be incentivized to accept the double spend, which would need a big bra since most of the income of Monero miners comes from newly minted coins and will be so for a long time since 0.6 XMR per block will be minted forever. So he's making the case that from an opportunity cost and economic cost standpoint, for smaller transactions, for like coffee or for things that you're picking up maybe at Home Depot, uh, it's not that big of a deal for zero confirmations because the cost to double spend or reverse the transaction would be significantly more probably than uh, the transaction initially done. Two, there are solutions being created for this. Paymo is a payment scheme using channels so that the user can do many transactions off-chain, offering fee-less, instant, and private payments. Does not need to change the Monero protocol, is like the Lightning Network for Monero. Now, maybe I'll do another video on that. That sounds interesting. I haven't heard of that. Let me write that down real quick. Paymo. And also, somebody told me to check out Atomic Dex. If you guys have any comments on Atomic Dex, I'd be curious, but somebody on the Odyssey brought up Atomic Dex. If you guys know a little bit about that, I'm interested to hear it because apparently Monero is not linked up to that. There are Atomic Swaps, according to this person, already active on Atomic Dex between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. That's interesting to me. And that'd be cool if Monero could be integrated as well. But I don't know if there are technical blocks to that. But interesting comments there. The only limitation is that they are unidirectional channels so people cannot send payments in both ways like the lightning network removing the capability of hubs like in the lightning network well that reduces the centralization in my opinion i i don't see that as being too big of an issue but the creators of Pimbo believe that with some changes in the monero protocol it is possible for bi-directional channels like in the lightning network so there's a monero lightning network seemingly coming along which seems very positive but our argument right now is that it's already really fast if you rely on zero confirmations and there aren't too many risks to that and the risks that there are to that can be mitigated through different measures edit searched it seems the creator of Paymo also found a way to create a bi-directional channel without changing the transaction scheme of Monero so there are good things going on there there are good things going on there. And this guy makes another good point. I'd argue in any situation where instant payments are needed and would be in person, uh, he says, we already have methods to mitigate people from paying with fake fiat. Right. There are cameras, police, businesses, uh, or business employees, etc. It is, it is extremely risky to fake a transaction. I'd say more risky than fiat. With fiat, if they accept a fake $10 bill, they might not find out until hours or days later. With Monero, they will know within just a couple minutes, if not seconds, depending on the next block. Therefore, I'd argue that instant confirmation 
of transactions poses zero risk to business owners when compared to traditional fiat. Now, I wouldn't say zero necessarily. This guy says agree. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. That's really interesting stuff. So with zero confirmation payments, uh, you can have instant transactions. Now, you're going to have that 20-minute unlock time, but if you are a business, that's not a big deal. Uh, you should have backup cash flow to take care of whatever expenses you have. You're not going to have to give change to customers anymore because of the divisibility of Monero. And it's going to be private. I mean, don't forget this, guys, the importance of privacy. It's not only a key for fungibility, but if you buy things with Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or another you know, surveillance blockchain, uh, cryptocurrency, then they're going to be able to see the balance in your wallet. They're going to be able to see all the other transactions that you've made. And who knows what they could do with that information. And, you know, if you pay a business, that's another interesting thing, right? Because say you're at a checkout counter and then you buy your goods with your Bitcoin. You send it to the address that they have on the monitor or the paper that's, you know, in some, uh, uh, you know, thing that you scan, you know. So you get their address, you send the money to them. You could go home and then you could go on blockchain.com. You could look up that address that you sent your Bitcoin to or whatever, and you could look up all the transactions that they made. And then if they have like one main wallet that all the checkout counters send their money to, then you're going to be able to identify what that main wallet is. And then you could check out and see all the backward functions, all the background functions of that business, right? And so that is uh, something which is really key to note. Uh, that's why privacy is really important because if you get that information on a business. I mean, that's valuable information that another business could use in order to use against that business or to develop their business in such a way that maybe they could take over a particular niche of that business. Maybe they could undercut their supplier to some degree. I mean, information asymmetry is one of the ways that businesses are able to maintain um, a profitable venture. And if they lose that information asymmetry because their business secrets get divulged through financial transparency, uh, I mean, that is a problem. So I just want to note that real quick. So we're going to tack, we're going to talk about, uh, taproot a little bit here real quick. Cause we're just talking about Bitcoin privacy. And there are some people out there who still think that taproot has solved Bitcoin's privacy issue. Lord help these people. <laughs> That's not the case. Um, but even with Taproot, the privacy of a transaction is still trash. Now, something to point out here is that if you look at this screen right here, like I don't know what this dude did uh, to make it so that he paid this exorbitant fee. But look at this. He sent $43 and he paid a almost $14 fee for the transaction. Maybe it was like some instant had to be done transaction, but that's a lot. That's a big fee. But again, that's why Monero is key. And Monero ship, who we were just talking about, actually. Good man. Taproot does not improve privacy. It only improves anonymity, i.e. multi-sig transactions look like normal transactions. But you can still see all the other details. Uh, so yeah, that's something to note. But it is good for atomic swaps with Monero for that reason. And untraceable, he says somewhat the same thing. Echoing, he says, there is no increased privacy. What is this quote-unquote increased privacy you keep hearing about that Taproot enables? If you have a multi-signature wallet, now those transactions look like a single signature wallet. The only privacy enhancement Taproot enables is that now no one can know if you own a multi-sig wallet or you're doing atomic swaps or getting onto the Lightning Network or whatever. So that's to note. And the last thing that we're going to talk about here is what fees you can expect to pay with Monero. This is really important for, I'm sure, a lot of you. And just to note, I had recommended this in our Monero adoption acceleration video, where if somebody wanted to accept more uh, Monero and incentivize people to pay them with Monero, what they could do is they could put like a note on their checkout counter uh, that says, Hey, I'll give you a discount for the amount of fees that I don't have to pay to the credit card companies because you use Monero instead of a credit card. Because when you use 
uh, credit cards in order to receive payments, you have to take a certain amount of that as a fee to pay to the credit card companies for using their credit card. Uh, or if you have like one of those like uh, things with like the red and the green button and the number pad where you stick your card in, you've got to pay a fee for that too. Uh, so um, y- you can incentivize people to pay with Monero and say, hey, I don't want to pay these stupid evil corporations that you hate and I hate. Use Monero. It's free money. It's our money. It's the people's money. And I'll give you a discount on top of that for the fees that you save me. Because honestly, the fees for Monero are pretty much free. I mean, they're pennies on the dollar. And we talked about this with Arctic Mine as well. Um, and as transaction volumes increase, and people can't believe this, it's true. When transaction volumes increase and there's more adoption, not only does the anonymity set get bigger and Monero becomes more private, but it gets cheaper as well because of dynamic block size. So that's something that blows people's minds. And this guy, Morpheus Nakamoto, he says, hey, Monero people, if XMR had the transaction volumes of Bitcoin, what are the fees expected to be? Oh, I don't want to go here. This guy says, regret is temporary, even cheaper than they are now. Monero Hornet says, bullish, indeed. Bitcoin have only 10 times more transactions. And we have talked about this. Go check out our uh, Monero transaction videos. We've made a couple where Monero transactions just keep hitting new all-time highs. More adoption is happening. But like, for instance, this company, they release data like once a month on how much they're receiving in Monero and Bitcoin. So right here, you'll see Monero takes up 11.6% of all the cryptos being used to buy coin cards. And Bitcoin is 51%. So that's indicative of huge widespread adoption and usage, as we've discussed. But he says Bitcoin have only 10 times more transactions. And who knows if those transactions are used for the real world. It's probably used for trading. Uh, so I don't think it would be much of a change as it is now. Now we are at 0.2 cents when Monero will have 100 times more transactions with Bitcoin or then Bitcoin, then transactions will be cheaper than 0.2 cents. Since more transactions that gets in a block cheaper, the fees get. A little trouble with the English, but he's right. That's a good question. I have no idea how it would scale, says HODL XTC. Have there been times in Monero when there was a huge surge in transactions and fees got expensive? And then this guy says, no, the opposite happened. Or let me just read the rest of this. I'm just trying to be efficient. Like it happened with Bitcoin pre-Segwit era or like it happened with the East gas fees currently. There are some very knowledgeable people on the sub and I'd be keen to see their perspective. Regret is temporary says, no, the opposite will happen. The way fees work on Monero is that the more transactions there are, the cheaper the fees are. The total fees end up being about 1% of the block reward, no matter how big the block ends up. Also, there was an edge case with this, where if transactions suddenly dropped, the fees skyrocketed. Arctic Mind talked about this during one of the meets. Uh, I'm not sure if he talked, maybe he's referencing our video with him. But, <clears throat> That's about it. And forgive me for continuing to drink water. I, my voice has been weak recently. But I, I hope that uh, informs you guys as to the use case of Monero. Um, there is definitely a lot of potential for Monero to be adopted and used. A lot of people say it's not scalable. Completely wrong. A lot of people say the fees will get expensive, like Bitcoin's is, if the transactions go up. That is also incorrect. Monero has the most use case out of any cryptocurrency out there. 100%. Real world economic use case. I'm not talking about uh, circle jerking with NFTs. I'm talking about real world use case to buy things people need. And it's going to become ever more used in the future. Believe me, we've made videos on this as well, where as the division in society grows over who is stabbed and who is unstabbed. I'm talking about the the procedure, the medical procedure, right? Uh, we're already seeing in Austria how the unstabbed can't go to certain stores. Uh, they've just been put back on lockdown, specifically the unstabbed. And you're seeing in Lithuania and Latvia and Australia and New Zealand and many other places now that people can't go into certain places to buy basic essentials, clothing, food, 
other things unless they have the procedure. And at some points, it's going to be like the mark of the beast, right? But Monero is going to become so key and important for that because cash is being phased out. You can't just like sit outside of a store and give people cash perhaps in the future, right? And you're not going to want to transact in Bitcoin or another surveillance coin because what if they make it illegal for you to sell in the quote unquote black market outside of a store to somebody who maybe can't get into the store? Who knows how crazy this could get? I mean, the tyranny is already quite wild. And if they roll out their central bank digital currency, <clears throat> it's going to get more wild, right? Because we looked at the Bank of England and and uh, <clears throat> they had said that they can make it so that certain merchants can and cannot accept the central bank digital currency. They can determine what merchants are essential, what merchants are are not essential. And so if they can do that, oh, well, goodness, you could be totally kicked out of the financial system. So Monero serves as a way that not only can people be included in the financial system of what's left of it, right? But we can build our own financial system to be parallel to the financial system and hopefully take a lot of that economic activity back from the tyrannical government, which is using their power for evil right now and to oppress the people, and to bring in a world which is totally in, in inverse to nature and to a world that we would otherwise want. We have to take the money back, ladies and gentlemen, and Monero continues to be the tip of the spear, the leader in our capacity to do that, which is why we're Monero first here. Monero first, what it's all about. So I hope that this was educational to you. If it was, Please remember to like the video. Please remember to comment uh, if you have some interesting things you want to say. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, please share this content with your friends. Please subscribe um, and check out our social media and donation information below if you want to support the channel. So I appreciate you guys coming by. This is Monero Mateo. I'll see you guys soon. God bless.